hi hello everyone my dear students i hope your progress is on the track and i hope you gave this cbt with lot of enthusiasm cbts are what we take pride in because this reflects your exam preparation very well but it does it way before the exam so you have time to improve and i hope you guys are taking these exams seriously now coming to the questions that were asked in your fmg cbt that you just gave in the month of may and i hope that all the five questions that came from anesthesia are something that you liked let's look at the discussion which of the following is the most important predictor of difficult laryngoscopy so this is not something which is unheard of and in fact it is one of the very important topics that we discuss that is airway assessment so let's look at the options thyromental distance more than 6.5 cm hyomental more than 3 finger breadth sternomental more than 12.5 and internal distance more than 3 finger breadths so we know that the criteria is lemon where you look externally where you evaluate certain distances called the rule of 332 and then you have malampatti so this question is basically asking you about this rule of 332 along with the two distances now the question is most important predictor so let's first rule out all the wrong options which are not a predictor of difficult laryngoscopy right so a thyromental distance of more than 6.5 cm is it a good airway yes hyomental distance of more than 3 finger breadth yes sternomental more than 12.5 yes intensizer more than 3 finger breadth yes so all four are criteria now you have to pick most important predictor and we have seen in terms of uh, the incidence that sternomental distance carries maximum positive predictive value for the assessment of difficult airway that means if you compare between all distances sternomental comes out to be the most important distance to predict the difficulty of airway all right now which of the following is used to monitor depth of anesthesia again something which is very straightforward blood pressure pleth vital signs bispectral can you monitor the depth of anesthesia using blood pressure measurement indirectly if the bp is high if there is tachycardia there are vital signs which are changing it tells you that the patient is not effectively anesthetized so yes but it is a surrogate marker so this cannot be true plethysmography is the technology used to measure the pulsatile flow of the blood like in spo2 that is the saturation so no vital signs not a direct but yes we know there is a frontal processed eeg frontal processed eeg that is that is one of the best methods one of the most commonly used methods to assess the depth of anesthesia so bispectral index bis question number three pain at intravenous site is least with which drug least now most of the time we are used to being asked the most and we know most is with etomidate followed by propofol and why etomidate has a lot of pain because of propylene glycol which is also found in diazepam that is why diazepam lorazepam are also highly painful but what is not painful is ketamine it is painless it is painless okay all of the following are easter type of local anesthetics except easter now this is a classification of local anesthetic based on the chemical structure of the intermediate chain and we know we divide them into amino esters and amino amides amino esters are all agents with one i in their spelling and amino amides are all agents with two i so all of the following are easter except so you can put this logic that they are asking one i except that means all with two i but i'll tell you a easier way to answer this question whether they ask you easter or amide or whether they ask you which of the following is easter or which of the following is easter except 
just pick the odd one out that would be your correct answer like this is one i this is one i this is two i this is one i the only thing that is odd is going to be the correct answer you actually don't need to even remember the concept because we have single correct answer type of questions so you just have to pick up the odd one whether it is easter or mi or all except all right question number 5 after delivering a shock what is the next step in cpr while you are performing cpr you have to formula c a b compression airway breathing this is for bls in bls or acls you shock the patient in acls you shock by manual defibrillator and in bls you shock by aed but irrespective of whether you shock by a manual defibrillator on aed immediately after the shock you start with cpr that is if you are doing bls you will give 30 compressions followed by two breaths and if you are acls then 1 then 100 to 120 per minute you will continue the compressions right remember to always resume cpr after shock why because when you are attaching the paddle when you are analyzing the rhythm when you are pressing that button to deliver the shock all this time the patient is not getting any compressions and when the patient is not getting compressions then there is no blood flow from the heart there is no blood flow to the heart and brain and that is when the prognosis starts decreasing very fast right so remember immediately after shock you will not waste time in checking for pulse or reassessing the pulse or looking at the patient you will immediately start with cpr right so these were the five questions that were asked in your fmg cbt this time i'll see you guys very very soon and we'll have lots of discussion and i wish you all the very best for your exam and do stay tuned for the next cbt bye bye